hello again. Thank you very much for joining me in another video. I really appreciate it. I'm out here in the awesome Aussie bush and this time as you can see I'm in the snow country. Uh, it's a pretty special part of the world and it's uh, really nice to be back here. I did, a, did my last snow camp probably two, just under two years ago and uh, that was a pretty specky camp. It was on top of a hill, had amazing almost 360 degree views and I had the most incredible weather. Uh, perfect sunset and sunrise and it was just perfect. The weather this trip isn't that good, <laughs> so I'm not going to try and beat it. I've come up here for a different uh, sort of experience. I've come a little bit higher into the backcountry, and so I'm probably at about 1,750 metres or thereabouts. Um, I was actually higher in my last camp, but I'm further into the backcountry, if that makes any sense. Um, so the snow is pretty deep. I'm on top of a small rise that goes up about 100 metres or so above the river valley below me. And I've got a pretty nice look down the valley. Now the only tricky thing is there's a bit of weather moving in, so it's nothing too bad. The forecast was for about winds of up to about 50 kilometers an hour. So I've been snowshoeing for about three hours and um, I'm absolutely knackered, to be honest. It's, um, it's been pretty warm today. It's been about six or seven degrees. So the snow is actually quite soft and heavy. I've hit my sort of window where I need to stop. I've got about two hours of light left and it'll probably take me that long to get the tent set up. I'm quite attracted to this spot where I've pulled up here. Um, the winds are forecast tonight to pick up from the northwest and uh, the north. And I can actually see them almost coming from both directions at the moment. It's quite, um, it's quite strange, quite strange indeed. Uh, I can see kind of clouds kind of converging there, moving opposite directions. Um, so this, this spot here has a small rise behind the camera and a small rise there. And what I'm thinking I might do is I might actually uh, try and dig out a little bit of the, the snow underneath that snow gum and try and pitch up there. Now that leaves me fully exposed to the winds should they come up the valley from, I guess, the east. But they're not forecast to do that, so I think I'm going to give this a go. As long as the wind comes where it should be coming from, uh, I should be okay. Like I said, if it comes in the other direction, I'll be in a bit spotted bother. But um, I don't think that's likely. Uh, and honestly, if it does happen, I'm 10 metres on the top of a rise, I can hop over the other side and I'll be fully protected on that side. So it's actually a pretty good spot. Tent makes no sense to me. It is not intuitive to put up. See how it's got these um, tensioners? That's why. Unbelievable.
the tent is not going well. Um, I haven't used this tent very often to be honest and I find it quite difficult to uh, set up. It's, it's very counterintuitive. I traditionally use freestanding tents. This one's a, a tunnel tent that works under pressure. That's why it's so good in the, in the higher winds up here. Um, but far out it is hard work. <laughs> it shouldn't be this hard. When I got home from my last, oh there it goes. When I got home from my last trip, I um, I sat up in the backyard and it seemed to work okay. Um, but I'm really glad that I've, I've set, I've given myself enough time. So I started setting up camp at three o'clock. Uh, it'll get dark at about five. It's already starting to get really, really cold. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got maybe 40 minutes of light left. So hopefully I had the bloody tent set up by then. <laughs> I'm getting so bloody hungry right now. I can't figure out how to tension this tent. It's driving me absolutely mad. Last time I had the problem at the other end, this time I've got it at this end and I can't figure out what's going on. This tent has an elaborate kind of system of, of tensioning straps that run between the poles and between the front of the tent. And um, I just, for the life of me, cannot figure out how to get the back of the tent taut, which it needs to be because it is designed to shed the wind. <sighs> yeah, unbelievable. Okay, glorious, glorious victory. I um, I swore it a little bit and then figured out that it actually wasn't that hard and I was just hungry. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it is pretty complicated though. Like for me, this sort of setup isn't really that intuitive and I think that's a bit of a problem. Um, it's obviously designed to be super lightweight and super strong. So the tension's there for a reason. I completely understand that. Anyway, what it was is there's two tensioning systems here. There's a bottom a bottom tensioner that pulls that corner out and these top ones here are just there to support it. I had them cinched down too tight and it was all out of whack. So um, anyway, I've got that squared away. I've got the front squared away. So uh, I'm going to shove all my stuff in the tent and then um, I think I'm just going to sit here and enjoy the view for a minute before it gets dark. Okay. It's a beautiful part of the world, guys. It really is. It's a real shame. There's actually a lot of dead snow gums here. Um, Scotty talked about it on his video a little while ago. Um, might have seen that a week or so ago. Um, but yeah, there's a, a native beetle which is essentially ring barking all these beautiful snow gums from the inside out. And um, the outbreak is is pretty serious. There's uh, a lot of dead trees I walk past on the way in. And um, yeah, if nothing if nothing changes. I really fear for the alpine areas. I this is a, yeah. There's so many dead snow gums behind the camera. It's um yeah. It's really sad. It's such a shame too. Like this is such a popular and well visited national park. It um you know probably the most popular and well visited national park maybe after the Blue Mountains. But um yeah, you don't hear about it. Everyone thinks that the the dead snow gums are because of the fires, and and I thought that too. But it's not until you um yeah look into it a little bit further. You can actually see the little tubes and the, the ring barking that the, the longy corn beetle does. It's, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a real shame. Um, there's a monitoring program, but that's it. So, yeah, we'll get to watch them die, I guess. <laughs> it's pretty bleak, unfortunately. Um, I'll put a, um, I'll put a link in the description to uh, the monitoring project that I found. It has a bit of information and what's going on, and yeah, hopefully they can they can figure something out. And um, yeah, but uh, it doesn't bode well, unfortunately. So I originally took my snowshoes off because I didn't want to damage my tent by stepping on it. The snowshoes have a... They have a bunch of spikes on the bottom. Um, and I totally would have stepped on it. 
Uh, so I've taken them off, but it means my feet have got pretty wet, so that's a bit of a problem for tonight. Um, so I'm just going to put the snowshoes back on, go have a quick look around before it gets dark, and um, yeah, then we might um, relax with a beer and cook up some food. So yeah, you can see um, just through those trees there, that is the, I guess the start of the main range. So I'm pretty close to where the, the big mountains are in Australia. Um, you know, maybe half a kilometer or so. And uh, yeah, the clouds are rolling in and, and sort of covering the tops, but uh, it's actually a pretty nice day. The, the wind, the wind isn't pretty severe, pretty severe. The wind isn't that bad and uh, yeah, it's definitely cooling down, but it's not too bad. How's that for a view? You can see I've just popped the tent on the other side of this ridge, so hopefully that kind of protects it from the, the worst of the winds. I do have a little um, snow wall there, and that snow gum should also help as well. But yeah, you can kind of see, uh, see down that river valley. Uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. I haven't done that very elegantly, have I? Uh, so I'm losing light pretty fast, but uh, the weather's actually amazing. I thought it was going to get pretty iffy there for, for a minute, but it's looking pretty good. So the only thing I think that's sensible to do is to dig myself a bit of a chair, and that's what I'm going to do. Actually, the sensible thing would be to crawl in a sleeping bag and <laughs> have an early night, but uh, that ain't happening. <sighs> All right, bit more work in this one. Bit more work. Oh, oh no! Okay, we're good. We're good. Oh, nice little beer chair. Not, not the worst thing I've ever done. Well, that's been quite a day. That has been quite a day. Been on the go for nearly, nearly 12 hours. I got up at six, just before six, and was in the car by just after 6.30. Long drive and took me ages to figure out how, to, how the parking works here. I've gone to a different area that I haven't been to before and um, yeah, it's kind of accessed via a ski resort. It's not, um, it's not overly clear if you haven't been here before, so I lost a good hour just trying to sort out parking, make sure my car was gonna be in a, a safe spot. But uh, geez, tell you what, I'm glad I'm here now. This is pretty awesome. Cheers everyone.
been too long between drinks. But I'm pretty happy with this one. Ooh. That's not bad. Well, I'm going to sit here and enjoy this beer. <laughs> oh, but before I go, I should, um, I should, uh, I know it happened a while ago, but I should um, say a massive uh, congratulations to Scotty's Gone Walkabouts. He hit the big 100 a little while ago, and um, yeah, it couldn't happen to a nicer bloke and a, a better ambassador for this amazing country of ours. So, um, yeah, well done, Scotty. Awesome effort, mate. Keep up the good work, and um, yeah, so good to see. So good to see, mate. Well, hello again. As you can see, the light is well and truly gone. It's about 6.30 now, and uh, I'm just melting some water, so I've got something to drink overnight and in the morning. Um, it's actually taken quite a long time. It's probably taken about half an hour or so to do a couple of litres. Um, I'm not trying to do it really quickly. I'm just sitting here having a beer and enjoying uh, being outside, but I am getting pretty cold. Um, and unfortunately, my filming light isn't working. I've got a kind of a jerry-rigged a little um, sort of emergency light here um, so you can kind of see me. So yeah, unfortunately I won't film dinner. I've got um, a little bit of eye fillet and some mashed potato and some broccolini and I'm sure it will go down a treat but um, yeah, I'm getting pretty cold now so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurry up and cook that and then I'm gonna go to bed and get into my nice warm sleeping bag. So we will see you in the morning. Thank you so much for watching this far and uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Well, good morning. Uh, unfortunately, it is not very nice weather outside. Uh, I came to bed at about eight o'clock last night. Um, I got really cold just sitting outside, even though it was, it was quite a nice evening at that point. Um, about half an hour after I came to bed, the, the first showers hit, and it's been raining on and off pretty much the whole night. So uh, I think we've had about 16 mils of rain. I just had a quick look at the, the, um, the meteorology site, and yeah, I think we've had about 16 mils of rain. So yeah, pretty, pretty soggy one. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what the snow's like on the walkout. I think that'll be pretty much hard compacted ice by the time I, I get out of here. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, unfortunately, no glorious uh, sunrise this morning, but um, that's all right. I'm going to brew up some coffee and just, yeah, try and keep warm. And then uh, the rain's forecast to ease off a little bit later in the morning. So um, yeah, I'll pop outside then and yeah, have a look around. Good coffee. Oh, it certainly sounds a bit alpine, doesn't it? <laughs> the wind ripping through. I can see in some places around the tent, um, I reckon I've lost about 10 centimetres of snow here because of the rain last night. So the peg, the peg is out a fair bit more than it was last night. And I think that's because the snow is melted. Well, the weather is certainly deteriorating. Um, it's almost snowing. It's still a little bit in between hail and snow. But yeah, it's coming down pretty hard. So uh, the temperature must have dropped below zero now. And the view down the valley is starting to fog up. So it's gonna be a, whoop. <laughs> it's gonna be a, um, yeah, tricky walk out of here, I think. So I'm just taking the opportunity whilst the weather is pretty average outside to do a bit of packing up. So I'm getting all the gear that I can squared away and then um, yeah, hopefully it won't take me long to 
put on the wet clothes and pack the tent down and then start heading out of here. pretty cool it's full-blown snowing at the moment and it's snowing quite heavily so it's um yeah it should make for an interesting walk out I uh I love the mountains up here they're just a they're really spectacular part of the world and uh yeah it wasn't so long ago only a couple of months ago that my wife and I got married up here well not up here um I don't think we would have got married if it was up here but uh in this general area we got we got married a couple of a couple of months ago and it was a really really special occasion so yeah the mountains are pretty important to us and um yeah I love I love being here Well, there comes the wind. <laughs> Hopefully you could hear the um the snow falling off and all the, the zip noise there. <laughs> That's some pretty decent snow. Yeah, I've changed my mind a bit. I was going to try and wait this little um, storm out and, um, and then hike out when it clears up, but yeah, it's uh, it's nearly nine o'clock already. By the time I've got everything packed up, it'll be sort of nine thirty, and um, and then uh, yeah, the from what I can see, it looks very manageable out there with my kind of skill level and the conditions. So I'm going to take advantage and get out of here while I can, just in case it, get, it was to sort of get any worse. Um, at least then I'm not going to get myself into trouble. So. Yep, nothing for it but to put the cold, the cold, the cold, the cold wet boots on and hike on out of here. Okay, well, uh, it stopped, it stopped snowing mostly, um, but the wind is starting to pick up, so yeah, time to get out of here. Uh, but yeah, fresh cover of snow, everything's looking pretty nice. I was talking about the snow gums last night and the longicorn beetle. You can see here that the the beetles have essentially ring barked the tree from the inside. You can see here's one of their many different holes. Yeah, devastating stuff, devastating. Alrighty, all packed up. The weather has actually improved. So uh, yeah, a little bit of sunshine, which is nice. So you can see a bit of definition in the snow. Uh, the wind is howling up higher, but I'm reasonably protected here. It might pick up when I'm in the valley uh, below. Otherwise, yeah, time to, time to head on out of here. The uh, fresh snow has certainly added a new element to the uh, the snowshoe. It's um, a lot of soft stuff underfoot, so yeah, it's pretty hard going. Um, I think the realization is that it's going to be far too difficult to film and, and walk on out of here, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Hope you enjoyed a, uh, a nice cold one, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much, everyone. Cheers. Bye.
I made it back to the car. It's just gone uh, 20 past 20 past 12, and as you can see, it started snowing pretty heavily, and it's uh, actually starting to settle on the road. So I'm gonna have to get out of here pretty quickly before before that becomes an issue. But yeah, have a squeeze at it. The old Subi's got a nice uh, a nice coat of snow, and uh, yeah, you can see it's absolutely pelting down. And uh, yeah, I was gonna get changed, but I'm just gonna get out of here. Anyway, I'm cold and wet. No different to a regular trip, really. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, heaps, guys.